against one, a pastime which has been preserved under the same name among their descendants down to the present time. As long as only the beings of the male sex engaged in that pastime everything went smoothly and peacefully, but when a little later there, passive halves, that is to say, their women, joined in and, immediately appreciating it, soon became addicted to it, they gradually attained such, finesses, in this occupation that if our arch cunning Lucifer himself were to rack his honorable brains, he could not invent even a tithe of it, turns, these erstwhile shepherds invented and, prepared for the beings of succeeding generations of that ill-starred planet. Now, my boy, when these two independent groups of terrestrial beings multiplied and, in accordance with the usual aim of all communities there during all periods of their existence, acquired every variety of effective means for reciprocal destruction, they began carrying out these processes with other independent communities, for the most part, of course, with less powerful communities, and occasionally between themselves. Here it is very interesting to note that during intervals of peace between these two communities, who were almost equal in the possession of efficient means for reciprocal destruction, the beings of both these groups, whose places of existence were close to each other, often came into contact and had friendly relations, with the result that little by little each picked up from the other those specialties that had originally been invented by their ancestors in short, the result of the frequent contacts between these two communities was that the Greek beings, borrowing from the Romans all their refinements of sexual turns, began organizing their what were called Athenian knights, while the Roman beings, having learned from the Greeks how to cook up sciences, composed their later very famous Roman law. A great deal of time has passed since then the inventors of both those kinds of being manifestation have long since disappeared, and their descendants who chance to become powerful have also disappeared yet now the contemporary free brain beings of that planet fondly dedicate more than half their existence and the being energy they have acquired to absorbing and actualizing somehow or other, unconsciously and sometimes even consciously, those two ideals, whose initiators were the bored Asiatic fishermen and shepherds. Well then, my boy, later on it seems, when both these groupings of your favorites had acquired many of the aforementioned, effective means, for the successful destruction of the existence of beings like themselves, and had become past masters at persuading or coercing the beings of other countries to exchange their own inner convictions for the ideals invented by their ancestors, they first conquered the neighboring communities situated on the continent of Europe, and afterward, with the hordes they had collected during this time, they turned toward the continent of Asia. And there, on the continent of Asia, they first began spreading that maleficent influence of theirs among the beings populating its western shores, in whom, as I have already said, being impulses for a more or less normal being existence had been instilled for centuries, and then they gradually began to advance into the interior. Their advance into the interior of the continent of Asia met with great success, and their numbers constantly increased, chiefly because the learned beings who had been in Babylon were continuing to infect the reason of beings everywhere on that continent with their Hasnamusian political ideas. 
what also helped them very much was that there were still preserved in the instinct of the Asiatic beings the results of the influence of the initiates and priests, disciples of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash, who through their sermons had inculcated one of the chief commandments of Ashiata Shemash, which declared, Do not kill another even when your own life is in danger. Profiting by this, these former fishermen and shepherds could advance very easily, destroying on their way all those who declined to worship the gods they themselves had adopted, that is to say, their fantastic sciences and their phenomenal depravity. These sowers of evil, for all the three brain beings of all succeeding generations arising on the continent of Europe, especially the Greeks, moved into the interior of the continent of Asia, progressing slowly to be sure, yet effectively. But when some time later there appeared at the head of these hordes that archvane glorious Greece, the future Hasnamas, Alexander of Macedonia, there began the clean sweep of the last remnants of the results of the very saintly intentional labors of our now common cosmic most saintly Ashiata Shemash, after which it was again, as they say, just a old, old story. Although each time the place of the center of culture, of your favorites has changed, a new so-called civilization has arisen, bringing for the beings of succeeding epochs some new maleficence, nevertheless, not one of these many civilizations has ever prepared so much evil for the beings of later epochs, including of course the present one, as that famous Greco-Roman civilization. Without mentioning many other lesser psychic features, unbecoming to three brain beings and now existing in the presence of your favorites, that civilization is chiefly to blame for the complete disappearance, especially from contemporary beings, of the possibility of crystallizing in their presence the data for same logical mentation and for engendering the impulse of being shame. Single quote. In short, my boy, the ancient Greek fantastic sciences were the cause of the complete atrophy of the former, and the ancient Roman depravity of the latter. In the early period of that Greco-Roman civilization, these pernicious impulses, which by now have become being impulses, namely, the passion for inventing fantastic sciences and the passion for depravity were inherent in the Greek and Roman beings alone later when, as I have already said, the beings of both these communities chanced to become powerful and began influencing the beings of other communities, those peculiar and unnatural being impulses gradually infected your unfortunate favorites everywhere. This took place, on the one hand, as a result of the persistent influence of these two communities, and on the other, because of that peculiarity of their psyche, common to all the three brain beings of that planet and already well fixed in it before this, which is called, imitation. And thus, Little by little, the psyche of your favorites, already shaky enough before this, has become so unhinged that in all of them without exception both their world outlook and the whole ordering of their daily existence rest and proceed exclusively on the basis of those two Greco-Roman inventions, that is to say, on the basis of fantasizing and of striving for sexual gratification single quote. Here it is very interesting.
interesting to note that, although the heritage from the ancient Romans has caused a gradual disappearance from the presence of your favorites of the organic chain, proper to free brain beings, there has arisen in its place something rather like it in the presence of your contemporary favorites there is as much as you want of this, pseudo being impulse, which they also call, shame, but the data for engendering it are quite singular. This being impulse arises in their presence only when they do something which, under their abnormally established conditions of ordinary being existence, is considered improper to be done in front of others. But if nobody sees them, then nothing they do, even if according to their own consciousness and their own feelings it is undesirable, gives rise in them to any such impulse. The blessings prepared by the ancient Romans have in recent times so permeated the nature of your favorites breeding on all the continents of that ill-fated planet that it is even difficult to say which contemporary community has inherited the most from these obliging Romans. But as for the inheritance from the ancient Greeks, namely, the passion for inventing various fantastic sciences, this has not become inherent in all the free brain beings of our day equally it has passed down only to certain beings in each of the contemporary large and small communities of that peculiar planet, but it has passed down chiefly to certain beings of a community existing there today under the name of Germany. Indeed, the beings of this Germany can boldly be declared to be the direct heirs of the ancient Greek civilization, for it is they who bring every kind of new science and invention into contemporary civilization. Unfortunately, my boy, the beings of that German community have in many respects outdone the beings of ancient Greece. Thanks to the sciences invented by the ancient Greeks, it was only the being mentation of other beings that was spoiled and continues to be spoiled. But the contemporary beings of the community of Germany have gone even further, they have become very skillful in inventing sciences that spread the specific disease of wise acting among the rest of your favorites, and during the process of this disease many of them, half consciously or even quite automatically, chance to notice some small detail of the common cosmic process which actualizes everything existing then, when they have shared this information with their colleagues, they together make use of this detail for bet another invention, thereby adding to the number of new means, which have so accumulated on that planet during the last two centuries that their total effect has now become what is called the resultant decomposing force, counterbalancing the resultant creative force of nature. And indeed, my boy, it is only owing to the sciences concocted by certain beings of contemporary Germany that the other free brain beings belonging to all communities have in their turn acquired the possibility of inventing, and almost every day, now here now there, they think up some new invention, or new means, which they employ in the process of their existence, and they have brought it about that poor nature there, already enfeebled without this through no fault of their own, is scarcely able to actualize her evolutionary and involutionary processes. In order that you may clearly understand how these contemporary beneficiaries have surpassed their benefactors, I must now tell you also about certain means 
widely used there at the present time, which owe their existence exclusively to these, nature helping, heirs of the ancient Greeks. I will describe certain of these means, now existing and in use everywhere there which have been invented by the beings of that contemporary community of Germany. I should like to point out, by the way, one very odd phenomenon, which is that these contemporary successors of the ancient Greeks give names to their maleficent inventions which for some reason or other all end in, me. Let us take for example, among the many particularly harmful inventions of the German beings, just those five what are called, chemical substances, now existing under the names of satine, aniline, cocaine, atrocaine, and alizarine, all of which are used there at the present time by the beings of all the continents and islands on that planet even, as our dear Mullah Nasser Eden says, without economizing. The first of these, means, specially invented by the German beings, namely, satine, is nothing other than, Samukuruazer, that is, one of the seven, neutralizing gases, that arise and are always to be found in the common presence. Of each planet, and which take part in the, completed crystallization, of every definite surplanetary and interplanetary formation, and when isolated are, always and everywhere, what are called, indiscriminate destroyers of the already arisen. Single quote. Concerning this German invention I also learned, among other things, that a being of that community happened to obtain this gas from some definite surplanetary and interplanetary formations and, noticing its special properties, reported his discovery to several of his colleagues so, owing to the fact that there was then proceeding in the presences of all the beings of their community what is called the most intense experiencing of the chief particularity of the psyche of the three brain beings of your planet, namely, the urgent need to destroy the existence of others like themselves, these scientists thereupon enthusiastically decided to devote themselves to finding a way of utilizing the special property of this gas for the speedy mass destruction of the existence of the beings of other communities. Having begun their practical research with this aim in view, one of these scientists soon discovered that if this gas were concentrated in a pure state ready to be released at will in any given space at any given time, it could serve their purpose admirably. That was enough for them, and from then on, during the processes of reciprocal destruction, this gas, artificially isolated from the general harmony of the actualization of everything existing, was released in a certain way by the ordinary beings of that community, just when and where the greatest number of beings of so-called, hostile communities, were gathered. When this particularly poisonous cosmic substance, intentionally liberated into the atmosphere under the said conditions, and striving to re-blend with other corresponding cosmic substances, happens to enter the planetary bodies. Of three brain beings nearby, it instantly and completely destroys their existence, or at least permanently damages the functioning of one or another part of their common presence. The second of the chemical substances I enumerated, called aniline, is a coloring matter that can be used for the dyeing of most of those surplanetary formations from which the three brain beings there make all kinds of objects needed in the process of their ordinary being existence. 
Although thanks to that invention, your favorites can now dye any object any color they wish. Yet how long these dyed objects last? Ah, just here lies buried their famous bismarcks, pet cat. Before that Maleficent aniline was invented, the objects produced by your favorites for their ordinary existence, such as, for instance, carpets, pictures, and various articles of wool, wood, and leather, were colored with simple vegetable dyes, which in the course of centuries they had learned how to obtain, and these objects would last from 5 to 10 or even 15 of their centuries but now, thanks to this aniline, or to dyes with other names that have this aniline as their base, all that remains of these objects after 30 years or so is only the memory of them. And owing to this Maleficent aniline, the beings of the community of Germany have been responsible not only for the rapid destruction of the products of all the contemporary beings, but also for the nearly complete disappearance of articles from ancient times from the face of that ill-fated planet. And this was because, for various Hasmimusian purposes and for their famous, as they call them, scientific aims, they set about collecting the surviving ancient productions from all centuries and, not having the least idea of how to preserve ancient objects, they only hastened their destruction more. Over, they used the antiquities they collected, and still use them, as models for cheap goods, known everywhere on that ill-fated planet is air size. As for the third of those chemical substances they invented, namely, cocaine, not only is this, chemical means, of great assistance to nature in hastening the decomposition of planetary formations. In this instance, their own planetary bodies, but it also has an effect on the psyche of contemporary beings of the planet Earth surprisingly like that which the famous organ Kundabuffer had on the psyche of their ancestors. In the days when their ancestors still had within them this invention of the great angel Luisos, they were almost always in exactly the same state as the beings of today when they introduced into themselves this German invention called cocaine. Single quote. I must point out, my boy, that even though the action of that German invention is similar to the action of the organ Kundabuffer, this came about, of course, without any conscious intention on the part of the beings of Germany, they became colleagues of the great angel Lewisos only by chance. At the present time almost all the beings who become genuine representatives of contemporary civilization introduced into themselves this blessing of present-day culture very meticulously and with delight and tenderness, and always of course, as our dear Mullah Nasser Eddin says, to the glory of the cloven hook. Single quote. The fourth of the enumerated chemical substances, namely, atropine, is also in great demand there at present. It has a variety of applications, but is most commonly used for a certain exceedingly strange purpose. It seems that, thanks as always to the abnormally stab, wished conditions of ordinary being existence there, the organ of sight of your favorites has acquired the property of finding the faces of others beautiful and pleasing only when they have dark eyes. And when this chemical substance called atropine is introduced in a certain way into the eyes of beings, the pupils become dilated and the eyes look darker. So most of them introduce this atropine into their eyes in order that their faces may appear beautiful and pleasing to others. And indeed, my 
here boy, those terrestrial beings who employ this German, blessing, you have very dark eyes until they are 45. I say until 45 because so far there has never been a case there of a being continuing to move this means who could still see after the age of 45. Alizarine, the fifth and last of these, inventions, is also widely used there. This, blessing, as contemporary civilization is used chiefly by what are called, confectioners, and other specialists who prepare for the beings of that planet very, tasty, articles for their first food. The confectioners and other professionals who prepare these tasty tidbits for the first food of your favorites use this short-fire German innovation, Alizarine, of course unconsciously, for the sole aim of giving these products an enticing appearance, that aim which has become the ideal of the whole of contemporary civilization, and which our honored Mullah Nasser Eddin expresses in the following words, as long as everything looks fine and dandy to me, what does it matter if the grass doesn't grow? In short, my boy, these present-day successors to the beings of ancient Greece, with all their practical attainments, based on the sciences they have invented, have become a great help to poor nature, though only, it is true, in the process of decomposition. It is not for nothing that our dear Mola Nasser Eddin gives the following wise counsel. Better pull ten hairs a day out of your mother's head than not help nature. Strictly speaking, the capacity to cook up fantastic sciences and to devise new methods for ordinary being existence did not pass from the ancient Greeks to the beings of contemporary Germany alone. The same capacity was inherited, and perhaps no less, by the beings of another contemporary community, also independent, and in its turn enjoying dominion. This community of your favorites is called, England. There has even passed to the beings of this second contemporary community, and directly to them alone, one of the most maleficent inventions of the ancient Greeks, which the English beings have thoroughly assimilated and put into practice. This particularly harmful invention of theirs was called by the ancient Greeks, diaphragms, and contemporary beings call it, sport. I shall tell you about this contemporary sport in as much detail as possible at the end of this tale, but meanwhile you should know that although the beings of the community of England also invent in large quantities a wide range of new objects required by your favorites in the process of their ordinary being existence, they do not invent chemical substances as do the beings of Germany, no. They invent chiefly what are called, metalwares. Especially in recent times, they have become expert in inventing and supplying to the beings existing over the whole surface of your planet vast quantities of all sorts of metalwares, called padlocks, razors, mousetraps, revolvers, scythes, machine guns, saucepans, hinges, guns, pen knives, cartridges, pens, mines, needles, and many other things of the same kind. And ever since the beings of this contemporary community started inventing these practical objects, the ordinary existence of free brain beings of your planet has become, as our dear Mullah Nasser Eddin describes it, not life but free jam. The beings of this community are now the benefactors of the other beings of your planet, offering them, as they say, philanthropic aid, especially as regards their first, being duty, namely, that of carrying out from time 
to time the process of reciprocal destruction. Thanks to them, the discharge of that being duty has gradually become, for your contemporary favorites, the nearest trifle. Before those inventions existed it used to be exceedingly arduous for your four favorites to fulfill that being duty, for they had to